because I really want you to go home uh, throughout the week and do a devotional time and read those verses, study it, see how it applies uh, to your life, really what, what, it, what it means. You know, if I was going to give this a title tonight, I would give it the title of The Only Message That Will Transform Life and Transform the World. The Only Message. There's only one message here. The true church, the body of Christ, there's, there's really there is only one message to preach from, from Genesis to Revelation. And that's the person of Christ. The Apostle Paul writes, he says, I'm shocked, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm, I'm perplexed. Um, I marvel. That you're so easily swayed from the gospel of Christ. If anything is going on, I believe, in the heart, in the heart of the Father tonight, looking down at planet Earth, United States, or California, 2021, is the fact that we have been so far removed from the plan of God. Come on, somebody say amen. You know I'm right. We built... Nice little sanctuaries that we can have cute little religious services, and if that doesn't work, then we'll have Zoom meetings. And we'll, and we'll put it out in the parking lot and whatever. And, and we're so far removed from truth. The only message that will transform our life and transform our world is Christ. We gotta, if, if, you, if I don't say anything else tonight, we've got to get this. As believers here, we've got to get this. You, you're saved, you go to church, that's good, but something has got to touch our hearts. Yes. That this is more than a religious service, that I'm hearing a truth that, that's, that's, that's activating something in me, that something is crying out in my heart for me to be changed. I can't wait to meet with a group of men this Friday night. And, and I, I mean, I've, I've got, honestly, I've, I've just got a, such a tremendous word that God has given me to, to, to really speak in the hearts of men. I'm of the opinion that it's got to happen with a man. And if it happens with a man, it'll happen at a home. If it happens at a home, it'll happen with the kids. If it happens with the kids, it'll happen in our cities. And we can change the world. Amen. We have got the church. The church has got to get the world right again. The world's upside down, and, and unfortunately, the church has gone along with it. No, th th there's got to be some men and women that got some chutzpah. that got some men and women that will stand and say, I am going to stand for the gospel of Christ. That I am not ashamed of the gospel of God, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That's really where we got to get back to. we got to get back to seeing a fresh movement, a fresh movement of God. Paul says, I'm surprised that you're so far removed From him that has called you by his grace, has called you unto Christ, and that you've been swayed unto another gospel. Then he writes, which there's not another. Now, we know this. The word gospel means good news. There's only one good news. There are not many good newses. There's only one good news, and the good news is Christ. And we got to start telling the story. we got to quit being ashamed or afraid to tell the story. We gotta, the, the church is back down so long that the church doesn't even know what the power of God looks like. And we got to say never again. It's funny how what God is doing, someone asked on Monday morning when we had our drawing from the well, and they said, Pastor, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. I said, what was the church like before... God just blew this place up and brought all these people in here. I said it was still the same. It was just a few numbers because my preaching didn't change. Our worship didn't change. We just kept doing what God said do. And I told you, <laughs> it was some time ago that, that God really spoke in my spirit, and I didn't get it at, that, at the time, but the Lord said, this is your time. Yes. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll tell you, that was, 2009, that was the end of 2019. I was in prayer. The Spirit of God said, this is your time. I got so excited about 2020. This is my time, and the bottom fell out. People quit coming to church. No one's paying their tithe. No, you know, I, I know, you know, and, and the first, for, for the first two or three weeks, we just, we, you know, we had to do what everyone did, and we preached online. And about two weeks after, the Lord said, okay, there's enough of that. 
and we opened up the doors and we just kept doing what, what we were doing. And last week, as in prayer, God spoke to us and I said this on Sunday, God said to me, because you showed me favor, now I'm going to show you favor. Oh, man. Man. I mean, that, that, that really touched my heart. I'm going, whoa. And I wasn't, I wasn't doing this. I was just trying to show God favor. I just thought I was just being obedient. That's it. Amen. And I find truly that obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm, I'm surprised that you're so far removed and going to another gospel, which, which there is not, not, not another gospel. Then Paul says, now he said, watch this. He said, even if I or an angel or anybody else Preach any other gospel unto you. Let them, and the word is anathema or, an, or anathema. Let them, and that, that word means, let them be damned with God's damnation. That is the strongest word in the Greek language. Uh, anathema, or some people say anathema. It says, let them be cursed with God's damnation. Then he, and then, then he emphasizes a second time in the very next verse. And he says, like I told you before, I tell you again, if an angel or any other body, anybody ever preach any other gospel to you, let them be damned with God's damnation. Man, that's some scary stuff. I don't know about you. I take that seriously. There's only one gospel to preach. And it's the gospel of Christ. It's the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. But I'm telling you something, if, 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 if we can get people to Christ, Come on. I just said we get them to the church. If we can get people to Christ, people's lives will change. If we, if we, if we, can, get a, if we, if we can get a drug addict to Christ, I mean really get them to have a confrontation with Christ, they will experience instantaneous deliverance. If I can get you to believe that he is Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that he is thee, and I, and I take you back to Psalms 103 that we talked about last week, that he heals all our diseases. If I can get you into the presence of God, Come on. Yeah. our bodies can be well. That's where the church needs to get back to. Hopefully that's where we're at and that's where we're going. And I, and I, I got no desire to shut this stuff down. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't need to temper this. A few, a few, a few years ago, we, we had, we had a event at the city park and, 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 and all the people came out and it was a, um, I forget, what, 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 what program was that? Well, anyway, we had a bunch of pastors who were going to talk, we were going to pray for the community and they wanted someone to pray over the, over the education and someone to pray over the uh, fire department, or police department, and someone to pray. Well, they asked me to pray over families. I said, well, I, I can do that. So we, so we, I mean, the park was full of people, Christians all over. So I, I did what I normally do. I, I want all the men here in the park to meet me down front. And they all came down and bam, they didn't know what to do. I said, no, look at me. I said, I just want to prophesy to you. I want to tell you. And I just, I did what I did. And I prayed for him. I got done and the head guy pulled me aside and said, he said, Pastor Gabe, he said, this isn't your church. You need to keep this more ecumenical. I said, you didn't tell that to the Catholic priest when he got up there and started crossing himself. <laughs> I'm not going to temper down what God is. I'm going to preach the gospel of Christ. Amen. Yeah. Whether people like it or not, it is the word of God. We need to leave here tonight being stirred. Something moved in my spirit. I heard a truth tonight that's going to make me a different man, a different woman. Is, this, is that making sense? Yeah. This, 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 is, this is kingdom stuff. Said a little boy was lost in London and the fog was thick and he was about four years old and he had no idea how to get home and he finally ran into a police officer and the police officer said, son, what's wrong? He said, I'm lost. He said, what's your address? He said, I don't know. He said, what's your name? My name is Johnny. What's your last name? He said, I don't know. What's your dad do? What's your mom do? I don't know. I just don't know how to get home. He's crying. And all of a sudden, the fog broke a little bit, and he saw a church up there with a cross. And the little boy said, he said, Mr., Mr., if you can get me to that cross, I can get home. If I can get you to the cross, yeah, come on. I can get you home. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. I just got to get you to the cross. And I know, I, I know I'm talking to the choir here. Most of you, most of you love the Lord. I, I, I'm trying to provoke something in you that you will go back to work tomorrow, that you'll go to your friends, you'll go to your neighbors with an impetus that saying, you know, sir, if I can just get you to the cross, yes. I can get home. Praise God. This is, this is kingdom stuff. The only message 
that will change and transform the callous hearts of men is the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. We don't need any more good philosophies. We don't need any, any more good motivational sermons just only. We don't need any good speeches. I don't want to tell you something that's just going to uh, give you a nice little religious buzz and you'll leave. Well, that was pretty good, wasn't it? I, I want to preach a message that's going to get under your skin. I want to preach a message that when you go home tonight, you can't hardly sleep. Because the Spirit of God is speaking to me. Because there's a fire that's blazing in me. I don't have much time left. And, 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 look, and look at the signs of time. I know that Jesus is coming soon and we're crying out to God. Lord, let, let me be a voice. Uh, man, women, boys, girls, let me be a voice in 2021, 2022, 2023, 4, wherever, however God gives us. And we keep telling the story. It's the will of God for us to become makers and shakers. I'm going to shake the world. There's only one gospel to preach, and it's the gospel of Christ. The plan of God always involves people. The deeper man goes into his religious experience, the further he gets away from God. Uh -oh. Think about that. The deeper, the deeper so much as his, his religious experience, mm -hmm. the further he gets away from God. I had some friends of mine that wanted to send their kids to the United States to go to the university. And they, ma and they made a mistake because they called and asked me, I said, you don't want to send them to the United States to go to the university? Because most of the universities are going to deprogram your kids against God. Yeah. Listen, I am not knocking higher education. I believe education is a good thing. But we got to be very careful who we let educate our kids. I like what one man said, you know, you know. You, just, you, you can't hand your kids over the Pharaoh and be shocked when they come back walking like Egyptians. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's only one message to preach. And that's the gospel of the kingdom. I told you on Sunday, I've had some local pastors that have kind of been out of sorts with me. Because <laughs> they have not opened their churches since March of last year. A whole year. Why? Because the government said. I'll tell you something. You don't know anybody that I think is more, more of a patriot than I am. I love America. I've been all around the world. And I love America. But there ain't nobody in the White House or the prison house that's going to run my life. My God still sits on the throne. Amen. Amen. God still sits on the throne. But plan of God always involves people, and we got to hear the voice of God. We need to uh, get God's direction. We need to let God push us into a place of, of real, true worship where our heart is yearning for more of God. I don't want to just be a man that just happens to go to church. I want to be a man that, that's set on fire for the kingdom. I want to be a man, if my pastor doesn't show up, I can preach. A men, women that are here have such anointing of God in your life, you're just not going to sit back and wait for something to happen, that you are going to be women that are going to shake the kingdom. You're going to be the virtuous women of God. Oh, I, 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 I could speak tonight to you ladies because God has a special anointing for your life. Wow. The planet God always involves people. The gospel of the kingdom, the message of Christ, is a message that always reaches out to people. If you want to see change, then you've got to make your mind up that you are going to be changed. If you want to create a change, then we need to hear the message of the kingdom. Quit being moved, quit being swayed. By what your eyes see. I'm not going to be moved by that. 
I love each one of you. But I don't let you sway me. I want to know the voice of God. I've told this, I've told this more than once. I, I've, I've missed God in the past. In my young, foolish days, and I was going to do things my way, and God wasn't moving fast enough, so I took matters in my own hands, and I did, I did that. I missed God. And I'm 68 years old, and I'm saying, you know what? I ain't got, I ain't got much more time to miss God. I'm not going to do this. I want to walk in the fullness of God. I want to hear the voice of God. Yes. Wow. Let's look at some scriptures here. Matthew 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Marishka, don't worry about it. He's fine. A lot, a lot of times people bring their kids and the kids make a little bit of noise and, oh, what, what, he's fine. I got 20 grandkids. Yeah. And hero, you're going to make number 21. <laughs> Listen to this. The, 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 this. This is the word that Jesus said. He said the gospel of the kingdom. Everybody say shall. shall. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I can tell you tonight why Jesus has not come. Because believers have not preached the gospel all over the world. We want other people to do it. If the church would ramp it up, I believe Jesus would come quicker. Someone the other day said, oh, Pastor, I just, I just wish the Lord would come tonight. And I said, I don't. I really don't. Because I've got friends and family and neighbors, they don't know Jesus. And they'll be eternally lost. So, so I'm, a, I, I'm of the position that in, in, in my sphere of influence, I have got to keep preaching and teaching the gospel. The good news Christ is the only good news. Christ is the only theme of the Bible. It is the only message. There's not another message. There's not another gospel. There's only one gospel. And Satan would Satan wants to think that gets us to believe that there are, there are many other gospels. There's only one gospel. I made a statement the other day, and people looked at me kind of funny until I explained it to them. I said, you know, there's only there's I I, I said there's a there's a thousand different ways to to get to Jesus. What? Some people come to Jesus through drug addiction. Some come through alcoholism. Some come, some come through imprisonment. Some come through the loss of a child, the loss of a parent. There's a thousand ways to come to Jesus, but there's only one way to come to the Father. And Jesus did not say, I'm one of the many ways. He said, I am the way. I am the way. There's not another way. I am the way, and no man comes to the Father but by me. So if, if I can get you to Jesus, I can get you to the Father. Glory to God. So we've got we've to preach the message that's going to get people to the Father, and we've got to bring them to Christ. Amen? Amen. Wow. Acts chapter 4, verse 2. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down uh, to the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ unto them. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. Over and over, the scripture says is one thing to preach. I like the story of the new pastor that, that he, he had been invited to pastor the church. And the boy got up in church and he preached. And they said, man, this dude can preach. You know, and the next Sunday he came around, he preached the exact same message, word for word. They said, wow, that was the second time we heard it. It was just as good the second time as it was the first time. 
Third week, he came up. He preached the exact same message, word for word. This went on for four or five weeks, and finally the board came to him and said, excuse me, sir, I mean, we really appreciate your message, but, you know, you've preached the same thing for the past six weeks. Don't you have any other message in your repertoire? He said, I got thousands of messages, but you ain't done nothing about the first one yet. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. <laughs> we sit in church and we hear preacher after preacher. We hear all this good word. Oh, man, wasn't that good? But yet we leave and our hearts are not changed and we're not following through with the scripture said. God is calling a body of Christ to service. I heard the word of God. Now I've got to do something about it. I've taken a stand in Christ. Now I've got to start moving in Christ. I heard the word of God speak. Now i got to speak. I've been preached to. Now i got to preach. We haven't done anything about the last one yet. Constantly throughout scripture it says that they preach Christ unto them. Acts chapter 10 verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching, listen to this, listen to this, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, the fact that he is Lord of all. Acts chapter 10, verse 37. That word I say unto you, that was published throughout all of Judea, began from Galilee, after the baptism with John preached, Acts 10, 38, and God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power, and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We have a way, listen, the church has a way to get people away from the spirit of depression. Yes. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to keep saying, well, I'm depressed. No, we come to Christ, and, and, and if, the word, if the word of God is truth, and you know it is, and I do it. Jesus would have, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he went around all of Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what was he doing? He was delivering all those that were demonically oppressed. Glory to God. But we got to get people to Jesus. The only message that's going to change the world is the message of Christ. It's amazing. I ain't never heard anyone say, well, I swear to Buddha. <laughs> well, I swear to Joseph Smith. I swear to Mary Baker Eddy. None of that means anything. It has no power. So what do they do? I swear to God. Or they use the name of Jesus. Because there's something about the name of Jesus. Wow. What, why does the name of Jesus make the devil tremble? Because the devil knows that he was not only uh, one with God, but he was God, and God put on flesh and dwelt among them, and, and, and we beheld his glory. And because the devil knows who this man, Jesus, I tried to destroy him, I tried to kill him, and then he said the third day he raised this thing up again, and he did. There's something about the name of Jesus. You know what's scarier than going into... Going into um, Trader Joe's not wearing a mask. Go in there and just say, Jesus! They won't care if you have a mask on or not, boy. They want you out of there. There's something about the name of Jesus. Years ago, I, was, I, I, I preached, I, I did an uh, invocation at a high school graduation or whatever it was, and, you know, and as I was doing that, I found this afterwards. The assistant principal was running down the hallways. Am I right? Running down the hallway screaming, don't let him say in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know? And I could, I could hear his feet coming down the hall. You know what I said? In Jesus', in Jesus name. Glory to God. There's something. There's something about the name yes, hallelujah. of Jesus. Glory to God. In, a, in, in, in just a few weeks, this brother over here, Furlan, he's going to be getting married. Glory to God. You know what I'm going to do? Well, first of all, we're going to be talking a whole lot. And he and his wife, they both love the Lord. So this, this is an easy counseling session. But I'll tell you what, when, when I tie this knot, we're going to tie this knot in Jesus' name. Yes, Glory to God. Amen. 
And you and and not not that you're not, but you're going to become the man of God that Stephanie needs. Wow. There's something. There's something about the name of Jesus. I'm not, for you that are taking notes, I'm just I'm not even going to read them all. I want I'll just give you these verses. Acts chapter 17 verse 3. Acts 17 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. There's something about preaching the name of Jesus. I, I love what I do. I don't need a pulpit to do this in. That's, I just love what I do. I look for the opportunities. Just want to tell the story. God will afford you the opportunity to tell the story to everyone if you quit being afraid. You, have the peop- you, don't, you don't beat people up with the gospel. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. So you love people in the kingdom without compromise. So we stand strong. I gave you a number of scriptures. You, you start reading these scriptures out and see and really see what it says. You know, and and the name of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Christ. The anointed one. Glory to God. Will make you stand out in the crowd. Hallelujah. Glory to God. People will be drawn to you and they won't even know why. Way back when we first had a computer, and we had, anybody remember dial-up? Matter of fact, when, when, when we got high speed, we thought we were in the third heaven. <laughs> but I got online, and I wanted to minister to people on online. My kids were home. They were small, and... and uh, I put myself, my handle was pastor. I found out nobody on the internet cared to talk to a pastor. So I changed that. I said, okay, I'm going to just call it Rev. Nobody would talk to the Rev. I woke up one morning, I said, honey, I said, God gave me an answer. I'm going to call myself Sly, S-L-Y, like Sylvester Stallone. Sly Shepherd. <laughs> Everybody started talking to Sly Shepherd. My kids, I'm on the, I'm on the internet. My kids would say, Mom, start praying. Dad's got another one. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I had people on the other end that I've never seen. Someday I'm going to go to heaven. Glory to God. And someone would say, so you're the one that was on the other end. And they were, they were, they were typing sinner's prayers. Glory to God. And they gave their lives to Jesus. Someone said to me, he said, you know, well, you don't know whether that was real or not. That's God's business, not mine. Amen. I just needed to let them know that there was an answer to their, their dilemma. Somebody get this tonight before you leave. There is an answer to your family and to your friend's dilemma if you will dare tell them about the goodness of God. Yes, hallelujah. Fear cannot be a part of your life. I choose not to be fearful. Glory to God. God says he's called you to be courageous. Then he says, I called you to be very courageous. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to quit. Matter of fact, some of you that follow me on Facebook, I put on Facebook yesterday, I forget how how I said it, but uh, I said, uh, don't give up. Don't back up. Don't pack up. Keep looking up. Don't give up, don't pack up, and don't back up. Keep looking up. For that's where our redemption is. Glory to God. I ain't got time to quit. So we, we make up our mind that the only way that the church, the body of Christ, is going to grow and to prosper is to preach the message of the kingdom. I got to keep preaching that God can still heal the sick. 
I got to still keep preaching the message of deliverance. Some of you are living still living under a generational curse. You've given yourself to the Lord. You love God. But there's this thing that just keeps gnawing at you and badgering you over and over and over and over. You know, and someone needs to come along and say, that spirit is a demonic spirit and you need to be set free from it. The one that the Son has made free is free indeed. Glory to God. I believe there is a level that we can live in. I believe that the word of God is truth. I believe that I can be the man of God that God wants me to be. I believe my wife can be the woman of God that God wants her to be. I believe my kids can be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe my grandkids. I just believe that the word of God is truth, and God has given me a divine promise. Glory to God. And if I will come in alignment with his word, every promise that God has given us, it will work. Glory to God. Paul says, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that you're so far removed from the gospel, which there is not another gospel. Our Mormon friends, and I got some Mormon friends, they wanted to sit down and talk with me. And they bring out a little book that says, Another New Testament. I said, There's not another. There's not another. Joseph Smith, he's still in the grave. But Jesus is alive. Glory. We've got to keep telling the story. Okay, real quickly, three things we must do. If we are going to start living our life for the kingdom, if we're really going to be the people of God that God wants us to be, One, we must preach. Two, we must teach. And three, we must heal. God has given us a commandment. Heal the sick. He didn't say pray for the sick. He gave us a command. Heal the sick. Well, Pastor, but, you know, well, we, you know we, 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 we can't heal anybody. Well, then God's a liar. Yes, we can. We don't do it in our own power. We do it under the authority of the power in the name of Jesus, uh, backed up by the Holy Ghost. And the God has given us the word that says, you know, go and heal the sick. Well, I'll tell you, we got to start practicing healing the sick. We just got to start doing it. Suppose they don't get well. That's God's business. But God said, lay hands up on the sick and they shall recover. So I'm just going to keep doing it. We had, we had a big old yard sale out here a few years ago. And I was talking to someone from South County. And they said, oh, you know, God has called me to a healing ministry. I said, that's fantastic. I said, what you out here for? What do you mean? If God's got really called you to a healing ministry, then you need to start walking down through the corridors of Twin Cities Hospital. You know, and in your life that you'll be like the apostles that when your shadows pass through them, people will get, start getting out of bed. Well, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> Tell you something. God has called us to preach, yes. to teach, and to heal. Tell you, God is pretty incredible. Come on. Watch how he does it. He tells us to start teaching, preaching, and healing at home. Right. Exercise, exercise, Exercise in your house. Your wife's sick. Anoint the oil. Pray the prayer of faith. She's still sick. Dump some more oil, oil on her. <laughs> your husband's sick. Pray for him. Pray for him. Someone said to me earlier today, because, you know, their, 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 their telephone's not working. I tried everything. I said, did you pray for it? Well, uh, I, I, I'm just nuts. I just know that if it don't work in the beginning, you pray for it. Hello? And either God will fix it or God will show you how to fix it. Or God will lead you to someone that can fix it. Yeah. It doesn't always work the way I want it to work, but I'll tell you what. My, my first, everybody say first. first. My first thing I need to do is pray. Get the wisdom of God. Amen. 
Normally we make that the last, the last thing. I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, I took this medicine, I tried this, I tried this. We, we done, you know, we, well, you, maybe, maybe I should pray about it. No, you should have done that in the very beginning. I probably could have saved you a whole lot of money, a whole lot of heartache and get you well. And even, even, even if a prayer didn't save you, God will lead you to some place that can get it well. We need to preach, we need to teach, and we need to heal. We must preach with fervency. We must preach with power. We must preach with demonstration. Paul says the gospel that I, I, that I preach, he says this. He, he said, the word I preach, I come with uh, uh, demonstration and with power. And that you break that word demonstration down with a prefix and suffix. You know, the suffix T-R-A-T-I-O-N is, uh, uh, means, is, it comes from the word traction, mean, which means to straighten out. It is married to the prefix, which says demons. So the word of God is coming to set demons straight. Hello? The word of God comes with demonstration and with power. Okay, devil, I'm going to apply the word of God to this. Glory to God. Christ must be preached. Christ must be preached. We must teach the full counsel of God. Hopefully what you're going to receive at the Revival Center, uh, hopefully, is the full counsel of God. We want to talk about the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and everything in between. You know, I, I, this, I'll tell you, the, this Friday, this Friday to, to, with our men, I'm going to be so far from being PC, <laughs> politically correct, okay? Because what I got to say is going to kick Nancy Pelosi in the back end. <laughs> Glory to God, Okay? Because men are still men. Women are still women. Amen. There's still mother and fathers in your house. You still, have, you still have sons and daughters. Glory to God. I don't care, I don't care what the media is saying. God hasn't changed this thing. So we've got to teach the principles of God. We've got to teach the whole counsel of God. We've got to teach the principles. We've got to teach the lifestyle of God and teach God's character. Christ must be taught to the nations. The gospel must be taught to the nations. We must heal the sick. We must set the captives free. We must be God's healing hands. Extended. Saints, let me tell you something. God wants to work. But he wants to work through you. I'm going to say it again. God wants to work. But he wants to work through you. God moves through people. God moves through broken and surrendered people. That's what God is calling us to. You know, when's the last time, not church, I'm not talking about church fast. When's the last time you fasted a day or two just to wait and, and clear your mind and get the heart of God? I asked a group of men some time ago, and I said, men, when's the last time you had communion with your wife at home? None, none of the men had. When's the last time you washed your wife's feet at home? None had. And I started talking about all this kind of stuff, and, you know, I sound a little bit bizarre. No, there's something about, there's something about understanding the gospel of the kingdom that works at the first church, and that's at your address. It's where you live. Because I'm convinced if it happens at your house, there will be an explosion here. Because we'll, 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 we'll all be on the same page. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The only message that will change the world, the only message that will change our church, the only message that will change our life is the knowledge of who Christ is. Because he is the difference maker. Christ is. And I want to bless you tonight. You know, I, I want us just, just to soak up the presence of God. It's only five after eight. We got a few minutes here. 
I want to do something this morning. Sarah, Kate, if you'll come. You know, and I didn't give you a heads up here, but I want some soaking music. <laughs> hey, any, anybody, you just had a hard day at work and just think, yeah, all your muscles hurts and your joint hurts and, and you just really want to get in the bathtub. You don't want to move. You just want to soak. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. <laughs> I know you have. You know, I want to ask you. Come on, I know we don't have a lot of room down here. I want everybody to come, if you would. Sarah Kate's going to play. You know, and really this kind of like, kind of like be our benediction because I believe as we soak in the presence of God, I believe that the Holy Spirit will do what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Come on. Come on, let's just spend the time. You know, you might as well spend this just a few minutes together. Come on down. Yeah, come on down. Let's, let's, let's fill this place down here. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. All over. You know, get back there in the corner. Come on, come on. Uh, don't, 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 don't.